years ago, the night I was born into this world, I set foot on this very bridge. The sole purpose of my existence is to destroy shadows. For that reason, I was given a personality and a persona. They said I was death. The 13th Arcana that was never meant to be. And I wasn't in this world for long before parts of my body escaped me, leaving me incomplete, as I was when I met you. Even so, your strength was far greater than I anticipated. The only possible alternative was to seal you away. And as circumstance would have it, a suitable vessel was available. A human child standing nearby. So I did what was necessary. I see. So I was confined within him. And I led him to my twelve missing pieces without realizing it. And then... I remember. I remember everything. It all makes sense now. Who and what I am. Palladian! Stop. Don't be foolish, I guess. There's no way you can win. I'm different than before. A machine is created for a purpose. Mine is to defeat you. I exist for nothing else. It doesn't have to be that way. I am sorry. I have failed. A machine is worthless if it cannot fulfill its purpose. I'm sorry. I'm afraid. Don't scare me like that. Is something wrong? Well, it's a full moon tonight. You noticed it too, didn't you, Senpai? Jeez, oh, I'm starting to feel like a workaholic. Oh no, did something? We don't know anything for sure. However, we can't find Igis. Huh. Where would she have gone? I sensed a persona, but it quickly disappeared. And soon after that, I couldn't detect Igis's presence. Could it have been Strega? Well, she hasn't sensed any of their members, but we can't be positive. I've confirmed Igis's location. She's on the Moonlight Bridge. All right, call the others. Let's see what's going on there. I'll just say here, I love how Koromaru was the first one to find her. I'm sorry. I... I... remember everything. Who I am. Who he is. I 
I know why I wanted to be by your side. I'm sorry. I failed. I'm... sorry. There's no need for you to apologize. You? Ryoji-kun? Wait, what are you doing here? I guess... What's going on? It's all my fault. Akihiko, wait. He's not showing any signs of aggression. Tell us. Who are you? What are you? I'm the same as the beings you call shadows. You're a shadow? I'm the embodiment of all shadows. The Apprizer, born from the union of the Twelve Arcana. The Apprizer? I remember everything now. The frightening truth about myself and shadows, it's all so hard to believe. You know the truth about shadows? Yes. Shadows are here to facilitate the rebirth of the maternal being. She will begin to awaken as she is drawn to me. The Apprizer. You. You're the Apprizer? What is this maternal being? She is a great entity. There is no comparable word in your language for her. Ten years ago, a man collected a great number of shadows and contained them in a laboratory. That's where I was born. But the unification was interrupted, and I awoke in an incomplete state. Not long after, I fell to Igis, as she did to me. Igis? Is that true, Ryoji? She knew she could not defeat me. So in an act of desperation, she sealed me within a child who happened to be standing nearby. That child grew up, carrying me inside him. And by a twist of fate, he later returned here as a transfer student. You mean... Yes. I lived inside him. His special persona awakened, as did the Twelve Shadows, all in order to become one with me. Ryoji, you're the Apprizer? A and you were inside him? None of this makes sense! It's all my fault. I'm sorry. There's more I need to tell you. Ryoji-kun! He appears to be exhausted. Let's let him rest. We have Igis to attend to as well. We'll continue our talk later. And so the truth comes to light. All of this. Ryoji brought him here just to set everything in motion. And yes, I'm sure most people here have already figured this out by now. In fact, most people who play this game realize from the moment Ryoji first appears, he is in fact Pharos. One thing about Pharos that's actually kind of interesting, his clothes. Now I can finally mention this. They look like prison garb. That's deliberate to represent how he was imprisoned inside the protagonist.
Well, there was no boss fight, but that full moon was certainly very eventful. In fact, this full moon might just be the biggest Wham! episode of the game. And that's really saying something, given October 4th and uh, November 3rd. So, there'll be no social links today. Today, the plot events continue. He's awake now. Let's meet tonight on the fourth floor. Kind of fitting that we're meeting the Death Arcana on the fourth floor. Okay. All right then. I'll see you later. Damn that Ryoji. Is everyone present? Are you okay, Ryoji-kun? Yeah, I'm okay. Thanks. Besides, there's more I have to tell you guys. Ryoji-kun? Yes, there are many questions we need answered. To begin with, you said shadows were here to facilitate the rebirth of the maternal being. Please elaborate on this. The maternal being is called Nyx. Who the hell's Nyx? Well, for one, Greek goddess of the night and the mother of Thanatos and Hypnos, which is very fitting. Nyx is the mother of shadows. In ancient times, she bestowed death to this world. If she is awakened, darkness will once again cover the land and all life will vanish. You mean everyone will die? All life will vanish? Then that must mean... Fall. But it's still possible to keep it from happening, right? What? There's no way to prevent it? I'm sorry. Wait, what are you apologizing for? Are you saying it's for certain? Yes. You heard the bell. I'm the appraiser. The appraiser of death. My existence is the affirmation of the fall. I'm afraid you will not live to see spring. But that's not too far away. <laughs> what are you guys freaking out about? All we have to do is defeat this Nyx. And that won't be a problem, because we've never lost. Defeating Nyx is impossible. It has nothing to do with strength, ability, or power. Just as all living things die, and the flow of time is continuous, Nyx cannot be defeated. What? That's bullshit! 
This is all so sudden. I was born from a collection of shadows. But now, I have a human form. So I can talk with you, laugh with you, cry with you. All gifts I received because I was inside him. So, I can give you a choice. A choice? Nyx's coming cannot be avoided. But it is possible to live in peace until she arrives. You'll have to... kill me. If I were to disappear, all memories of the Dark Hour would disappear with me. As would any recollection of the fate that awaits you. You won't remember anything. The coming of the Fall will be instantaneous, and you will not suffer. We'll forget everything? You'll be able to return to your normal lives. And in doing so, the time until the fall will be slightly delayed. In essence, I am the same as Nyx and cannot be killed. But thanks to him, there's a part of me that's human. So if death comes from his hands, I think it may be possible. It's Grimer all over again. Ryoji-kun! If you don't kill me, you will suffer more than you could ever imagine. With no hope for salvation, you will live every day paralyzed by the fear of your impending death. And I... I don't want you to have to endure such pain. I don't want my memories to be erased. To forget everything would be like hiding from the truth. Would that really be such a bad thing? All that awaits you now is despair. You don't know the terror of absolute death. Please, don't make your decision without at least thinking about what I've said. <sighs> Why is this happening? You don't have to decide right now. You have until December 31st. New Year's Eve, to think about it. After that, I'll dissolve into the blackness of the Dark Hour and become intangible. Ryoji... I will disappear with the coming of Nyx anyways. So don't worry about me. I'll be back on New Year's Eve. Wait! Wait! I can't sense him anymore. Ryoji-kun's no longer here. Are you sure? Yes. Ryoji-kun. We will see him again, on New Year's Eve. And when that time comes, we have to make our choice. It's just like Ikutsuki said. What he and Mitsuru's grandfather were trying to do. It looks like they have succeeded. thing is about that line, though, we've already seen that. Shinjiro, Chidori, all of their sacrifices, they chose how they die and they made their deaths meaningful. To erase our memories now, we lose our memories of their sacrifices and what they did would be completely for nothing. I really think the choice is obvious here, but I can see where Ryoji is 
he he really seems like he genuinely doesn't want us to suffer. It's Ryoji's a really interesting character. Like all the flirting stuff beforehand is kind of bizarre. I personally chalk that up to him trying to act more like the protagonist because that's how the protagonist is in my head canon. But then this happens and it's like Ryoji is genuinely sorry. He genuinely doesn't want to end the world, but he feels like it's inevitable and just it's it's literally what he is. He can't, like, that's how he was made, what he was made to do. He can't change that. So in a way, it's just really sad for him. Well, also sad for us in a way. The idea that we're locked in a situation where victory is impossible. Because in a sense, Nyx is more of an actual embodiment of a fact of life rather than an actual... I mean, there are an actual being as well, but... Yeah, a forum let's play, to quote this, I normally don't, but one line that I heard from it that I actually think is quite fitting is saying that defeating Nyx is like defeating the colour blue. Anyway, though, another thing that I need to mention here, and uh, this background music is really unfitting, but, uh, remember all the way back at the very, 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 very beginning of the game, that part where another Persona just exploded right out of Orpheus and ripped the Magician Shadow to shreds and seemed to consume it. Finally, after all this time, after all these hours of playing, finally that moment makes sense. That was not a Persona. That wasn't even Thanatos. That was death. That was the Death Shadow. It came out and consumed one of its pieces. Adding this in in post because I forgot to mention it at the time, but one other very important thing about Ryoji. Remember how earlier on I mentioned that the female protagonist's fortune social link was on a very, very tight timer? That's because it's Ryoji. Obviously I couldn't say that earlier on because it would have been a huge spoiler. Basically how his link works is that he is only available on a very set number of fixed days. On all of these days, you must hang out with him. If you don't hang out with him on any of those days, the link ends there, and you're never able to max it out. So yeah, remember how a lot of people say that the female protagonist route is generally recommended for people who already know this game's story, because not just one, but two of its social links, the other being Shinjiro, are on a really tight timer? Yeah. If we check the calendar, we'll notice that New Year's Eve is also a full moon, the day when Ryoji promised that we'd have to make the choice. This December has two full moons, which was actually true of December 2009. There is a unique name for this kind of thing. This is called a blue moon. Normally, there's only one full moon in a month, but on very rare occasions, there's a second one, which is referred to as the blue moon. Now, here's where the overanalyzing part comes into it. Some people think the etymology of the term blue moon actually comes from an old English term that's no longer in use that's something like blue, which means betrayer, and that it's actually supposed to be betrayer moon. Considering how Ryoji in some ways betrayed us, this does make a lot of sense. Also, the Blue Moon is also considered the Betrayer Moon because it's an additional full moon in a month that wasn't meant to be, and because of that, it messes up with the plans of farmers, and in the case of the month of Lent, it means people have to fast themselves for longer. But in this case, it means that the year adds up to 13 full moons instead of 12. A 13th moon that wasn't meant to be. Just like Ryoji is the 13th Arcana that wasn't meant to be. Again, I doubt how much of this intentional is intentional, but it's interesting to think about. We can talk to all of our dorm mates here. Obviously, we can't go to Tartarus tonight. Here's the thing, though. When Ryoji said living with the terror of absolute death, isn't that just what life is? So that's another thing. In a way, everyone who's alive knows that terror. But if everything is going to end, then that's something really serious, something that we need to avoid at all costs. But if there's any... 
It doesn't seem like there's anything we can do. Nobody's really interested in talking. Anything on TV? Doesn't seem like we can understand what Koromaru has to say about any of this. And yeah, now we know why after these intro patient numbers aren't declining. Before it was almost like an incomplete form of it was spreading because only parts of the Death Arcana were active, but now that it's, it's returned to its full power, more and more people are getting this and it seems like the end game is there is no date of recovery. The end game is the whole world gets that and, and just everything ends. Which is exactly what Ikutsuki was trying to do. So, yeah, some pretty heavy stuff happened tonight. But even then, we still have more social links to do tomorrow. So, I'll see you back here for that.